Today in this video, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations um, by using the four different methods that we've learned this year. The very first method that we've learned is the zero product property. Okay, if you can remember back in chapter six, I believe that was the beginning of this semester, we had polynomials that looked like this guy right here. Um, this particular polynomial can be factored. We can factor it into x minus 3 and x minus 4. And if you can remember, we looked for factors of positive 12 that added to negative 7. So in order for you to use the zero product property, the polynomial, the equation, must be factorable. Otherwise, you can't use it. The next method that we've learned this year and just recently was a square root property. But we have to be able to write the equation as a perfect square that equals a number. So if we are given an equation similar to something like this, um, we can move the 5 to the other side, and now we have a nice perfect square that equals a number. And we can use the square root property to solve that. Completing the square. Um, when can you use completing the square? You can use it whenever you have the bx term. Okay, so that means you have to have x to the first power, that term in your equation. So if you were given an equation that looked like 2x squared minus 3x plus 7, well, we have the minus 3x, we have that x term in our equation, so we can use the method of completing the square. And then the quadratic formula, you can use that for any quadratic. There are no limitations. Okay, so the first three have limitations. The zero product property has to be, the equation must be able to be factored. Square root property, you have to be able to write the equation as a perfect square that equals a number. Completing the square, you have to have the x term, right, that bx term, because we need it. But the quadratic formula, you can have any quadratic equation and use the quadratic formula. And you're gonna ask yourself, why would you use any of the other methods if the quadratic formula always works? Well, the quadratic formula isn't always the fastest. So I'm gonna go through some examples and we're gonna solve these equations and we're gonna pick um, one of those methods and I'm gonna pick at least one equation for each method so that you can see a review. All right, so how would you solve this equation. Well, we can't use completing the square because completing the square requires the x term, and I don't have the x term here. Um, I could factor it, or I could use the square root property. I typically use the square root property if I can. Okay, so I'm going to use the square root property because right here I can see that if I add 25 to both sides, I get 4x squared equals 25, and then I can divide both sides by 4 to get x, whoops, x squared equals 25 over 4. Now from here I have a nice perfect square, right? Perfect square that equals a number. I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides and just as a reminder, plus or minus, you can't forget the plus or minus, and you can separate the numerator from the denominator. So when I take the square root of a square, the square goes away, and I get plus or minus 5 over 2. And remember, for those that need to factor still, 25 breaks up into 5 times 5, 4 breaks up into 2 times 2, so we have a group of 5s in the numerator, a group of 2s in the denominator. So this is my final answer, plus or minus 5 halves. Alright, so how would you solve this equation? Well, I have all three terms, and they're not all on the same side. So before I get started on picking a method, I'm going to move that 12 to the other side by subtracting it. All right. So now I take a look at this, 
and I have the middle term, so I could use completing the square if I wanted, but what do I notice? I notice the number in front of the x term is negative 1, and I know when I do completing the square I have to multiply by a half. I like to have even numbers. I like this guy to be even for me to use completing the square. So I could also use the quadratic formula, but if I really take a look hard, let's see, um, whoops, I want to use blue. Let's see, do I have factors of negative 12 that add to negative 1? And I think I do, negative 4 times 3. So that means I can actually factor this polynomial. So when I factor this, I get x minus 4, x plus 3 equals 0. So now I'm going to use the zero product property. The zero product property up here, let me write this one, square root property. That's our electric company, SRP. All right, zero product property. And zero product property, meaning that my equation equals zero. I have a product, right? I factored this into a product. And so now I can set each of my factors equal to zero to solve. So I get x equals 4 and x equals negative 3 because I subtract the 3 and I add the 4. So I get my two answers right there. All right, how about this? I have a nice quadratic equation. Um, I can't use square root property because if I subtract 10x and 15, This is not a number, right? I have a nice variable here. So I can't use the square root property, that's out. Um, I don't know if I can factor it. Do I have factors of 15 that add to 10? Well, the only factors I know are three and five, and that doesn't work. So, that's not going to work, so I'm left with completing the square or using the quadratic formula. Well, I know everybody likes the quadratic formula, but I actually like completing the square. And my test for completing the square is, do I have my bx term, which I do. Um, and again, I said I like that number to be even, and it is. All right, so I'm going to use completing the square. <clears throat> so remember the first step for completing the square is to move to keep your x terms on one side, create your blank, and move the other number to the other side and write a blank. And then we take our number in front of our x, and we multiply it by a half, and we square it. So half of 10 is 5, and when you square 5, you get 25. So I'm going to write 25 on each side. And when I factor the left side, remember, I should see this positive 5 in my factor that helps me to not have to think too much. And then negative 15 and 25, or positive 25 minus 15, that's 10. So now I can use the square root property to solve this. And don't forget your plus or minus. I get x plus 5 equals, and 10 reduces to 2 times 5, so that doesn't simplify. So this is just plus or minus radical 10. So I set up my two equations, and I subtract 5 from each side, and I get x equals negative 5 plus radical 10 x equals negative 5 minus radical 10. So those are my two solutions. So I use the process of completing the square. So, so far I have factored, I've used the zero product property, the square root property, and completing the square. So let's move on to this one. All right, so I can't use the square root property because when I move the 5x and the 7 to the other side, 
This is not a number, I have a variable. Okay, how do I factor? Well, I look at the product of these two, that's negative 14, that adds to five, negative five. Oh, I could do that, couldn't I? I could do negative four, negative seven times two. So I could factor this one, but I think I'm gonna pass on factoring this one because not many people like to factor with a leading coefficient. So I could use completing the square because I have my BX term, but this number is not even. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose um, the quadratic formula for this one. And I'm gonna find my A, B, and C term. A equals two, B equals negative five, and C equals negative seven. So I know my formula is X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to substitute my values in using parentheses. 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 7 all over 2 times 2. So I end up with the negative. Negative makes it a positive. 25 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times negative 7 is a negative 56. So again, that negative, negative turns into a positive. And I get 5 plus or minus, that's going to be 81. Oh, that works out really nice because 81 factors into 9 times 9. And remember, I don't necessarily have to go all the way down to prime factors if I have two factors that are the same. So now when I simplify, I get 9 there. And I know I can add 5 and 9, so I'm going to split this up into two equations. 5 plus 9 over 4 and 5 minus 9 over 4. The first one's going to be, let's see, 14 over 4. And when I reduce, it's 7 halves. Second one's going to be negative 4 over 4. And when I reduce, I get a negative 1. So I get my two nice answers right there. All right, so how about this one? We'll do as many as I can in 15 minutes. Well, this one looks like I could use the square root property because when I move that 52 to the other side, and then I divide by 4, I'm not even going to simplify that fraction because when I take the square root, 4 is a perfect square. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And remember, I'm going to put my plus or minus, and I'm going to separate my numerator and denominator. So now I get, wow, this guy, negative 52 is a negative 1 times 52 is 2 times 26. 26 is 2 times 13. 4 is 2 times 2. So I have that. But then I remember that the square root of negative 1 is i. So I get 2i radical 13 over 2. And I have to remember I can reduce these. They will reduce. So what do I get for i? I mean for x. I get plus or minus i radical 13. All right, so I have my two answers here as well. Okay, so for the last couple, I'm not going to solve. I'm just going to show you what I would do. I would use the square root property because you have a perfect square and you have a number. So use the square root property for that one. This one, I would subtract the 3x first. And I would take a good look at it. And I would use the quadratic formula. Because I do have my bx term, but that's not even at odd. For this one, 
I would probably use, let's see, I have my BX term, it's even. I would probably use completing the square. There's no right or way method to, right or wrong method between completing the square and the quadrant.